Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. So we're just going to keep it rolling with the race condition stuff. This is the second lab in that race condition condition series in Port Swigger. Uh, if you haven't seen my last video, we went through kind of like the first most basic lab. I would suggest giving that one a quick watch if you're new to race conditions. Otherwise, we're going to dive right into bypassing rate limits. All right, so we're up against the clock a little bit on this one. So the slab environment resets after 15 minutes. So you can see we've already got a timer. I've already lost a couple minutes. So we're just gonna kind of dive right in here. Um, so the goal of this one is for us to bypass the rate limit that is present here on the username and password field. Um, so first let's just like, let's, let's figure out what the rate limit even is. So if I were to come in here and try to log in as like ourselves here, we'll do wiener, and Peter, I believe, is the passwords. And we'll pull open this here so we can kind of view the requests as they go through. And that actually failed. So we have this post against login where I've got Wiener and Peter, and we can see it came with a 200 OK that contains this text here of invalid password, or it should. Let's see, I'm searching for invalid. Yep, it's right there. I just had some spaces in the front. So we know that a fail login is going to respond with the 200 that says invalid username or password. Um, let's actually try to sign in for real this time. Last time I accidentally had a typo. And we can see when we have a post request against this endpoint that is successful, we get a 302. So it actually redirects us back to my account and sets the session cookie. So that's the behavior we're going to look for as far as like a successful login attempt. So that's um, it's good to know. Um, but we need to determine what sort of rate limit might be here. So I'm going to log back out. And if we go back to this failed post uh, request, if I send this to repeater, and let's just make the password, you know, something that we know is not going to work. So a bunch of X's here. If I send this, we actually get invalid CSERF token. It's probably because we've invalidated our session by signing back out. Let's come back and let's just do... Carlos, because that's the user we need to actually brute force anyway to solve the lab. And I'll just do like Carlos and password. And again, we'll see this post request. Send this to repeater. I'm going to send it a second time. And again, we get this invalid username or password. I'm going to send it a third time here. We still see invalid. I'm going to send it a fourth time. And notice how we no longer are getting any hits on the keyword invalid. Instead, if we scroll down, we can see, oh, you've made too many incorrect login attempts. So it actually is doing some sort of account logout. But I'm curious, is this just tied to this user? Like what if I give a, a different username and send it? Okay, so we're back to the invalid username or password. Um, so what this is telling me here is that somehow the server is making track or taking note of like how many attempts you've, you've tried logging into each specific user like if we switch back to Carlos, we're right back to not having any hits on the keyword invalid. And we're back to this, you know, actual like rate limit here. Okay, so this might be a possibility or a situation where we could have a race condition. And so to test this, um, we actually really can't utilize the repeater tab, you know, trick that I was just doing in the previous video. Um, in this case, we're going to utilize a utility called Turbo Intruder, which will require a little bit of familiarity with Python, um, but it's not too bad. And so what we're going to do is highlight the password here, because this is what we ultimately want to brute force. And I'm going to go ahead and send this to Turbo Intruder. i got to move myself out of the way so I can do that. Password, extensions, Turbo Intruder. Well... Again, I'm back in the way. Let's move myself up there. Okay, so this is the Turbo Intruder interface. And sorry if this is a bit small, I'll try to zoom in um, during the video. But what we'll wanna switch to is instead of using this bit of code, you would want to switch it down to race single packet attack. Um, and that's gonna load a template that you'd be able to kind of modify from there. For me, 
this is actually the code that we ended up creating when I solved this last. And so when you load that template, there's a couple items you're gonna be missing. First, you're gonna be missing line 10 here, where we're setting a variable called passwords equal to your clipboard. Um, the other thing that we need to do is add for password in passwords. So I believe when you load the template, it'll be like for I in sequence one through 20 or something like that. Um, replace that with for password and passwords, and then add this right here after target.rec do comma password. And what this should do is it should take whatever values you have in your clipboard and actually pass that over to this positional parameter right here. And so if we go back to the lab, it's got a list of passwords for us that we'll go ahead and copy. So this is from the lab instructions. We'll just copy all these out. And once these are in your clipboard, if this is how your, um, your script looks for Turbo Intruder, go ahead and run the attack. And what we should see is all of these requests being made at once. I always like to review and make sure the request does what you expected it to. So for example, our payload here was QWERTY. We should see that here as the password value. Payload now is ABC. We should see that here as the password value. So that's the first thing I like to do. Let's make sure anytime you're using Turbo Intruder or even just like regular Intruder, take a look at the, the actual request you're sending and make sure they're actually doing what you intended. Um, once you know that that's good, then start looking at some of these responses. And so we can see again, we're back to this invalid username. And if we check a few of these, that one says invalid username, this one says invalid username. Okay, so theoretically, that's three invalid usernames. We shouldn't see that anymore, right? Like everything after this should say something like, you know, uh, rate limit exceeded. However, we see another one that says invalid username. So that's four. Here's another one, that's five. And so if you keep going through these, we'll notice, okay, we are definitely bypassing the rate limit. We've we were able to guess more than just three passwords. So that's great. Maybe we successfully brute force this account somewhere. Remember before, the status code we received on a successful login was 302. So I'm gonna sort by status code here. And it looks like all of these status codes return either, oh, that's not true, right here. We've got one that returns a 302. And so we could see that 302 found, password of 12345678900, and we have this set cookie session token. So I can actually try to copy this password here and we can go back to our username field. We'll do Carlos and our password will paste. And if everything works right, this would sign us in. Although we're getting again a, a CSERF thing, maybe I needed to reload the page before trying that. We'll try a second time here and check that out. We've got access as the Carlos user. We can go to the admin panel and we could delete ourselves to solve the lab. So that's it. That is bypassing a rate limit by race condition or via race condition, however you want to word what we just did. Um, I hope this made sense. If you have questions about what happened here, drop them in the comments. I'll try to help you. And if I happen to, you know, explain something incorrectly, please let me know. I'm here trying to learn alongside you guys. So that's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.